Today, lesson 31A, line of best fit. Yesterday, we learned how to write the equation of a line using the point-slope equation or the point-slope formula. Um, over the next several lessons, we're going to be using that formula or that equation quite a bit. So today, we're going to determine the equation for the line of best fit for a bivariate set of data. And that's just a fancy way of saying a uh, table of x and y values. You're also going to be able to read plots and decipher the data. All right. So here's a set of data. We have year compared to sales of SUVs. You could think of the year as the x values in a table, and you could think of the sales as the y value in a table. That's when I mentioned it just a second ago about bivariate data. That's just a, a, fancy, a, a fancy term for an XY chart, an XY table, or values that you could interpret as X and Y values, okay? So if we were to plot all of those um, ordered pairs, because that's what it represents, X values and Y values, it looks like this. Do they all line up perfectly, yes or no? no. They do not. And when that happens, we call that a scatter plot. And a scatter plot is a coordinate graph of bivariate data points. And I think that both bivariate data and scatterplot definitions are in your notes. So the question is, what are we going to do when we have a situation like this where we have a scatterplot? Well, that's what today is all about. Taking and trying to find the line of best fit or the best equation that would represent the majority of that data or those ordered pairs there. So if we look at this set of ordered pairs that are all plotted there, it looks like they're going uphill, increasing, and it looks like they're close to being linear. They're not quite linear. And we call this a positive association. Positive, and you can think of it in terms of slope, a line that goes uphill from left to right has positive slope. And so now if you look at that second piece of paper, I've sort of summarized all of the different possible things that can happen as, as far as scatter plots go. So we have a positive association where the, lot, the dots appear, appear to be going uphill. So we have two different types of positive linear associations. We have a regular one and then a strong one. It's termed strong if the points are closer to your line of best fit. So if you look here, all the points are a little closer to our line of best fit than they are right here, and that's why we call that strong. So as the x input value increases, the output also increases. That's what makes it go uphill. Then we have this situation where they're kind of going downhill. Negative association. You could think of that as negative slope. And we have the strong negative linear association because the dots are a little closer to our line of best fit. And then we have this situation where they're just scattered all over the place. It's called no association because we can't really fit any line in there, it's always going to be a long ways away from a lot of the ordered pairs there. So no association here. We call this no linear association because uh, as you get into higher statistics classes, you can fit some things with a curve. So that's why we're saying no linear association there. And then if it's perfect linear association, that means all the points line up perfectly for us. And then we have a situation where it might look like zero slope, and that's why this is called zero association. So I think if you thought about all of these things, it's not too far of a stretch from what we already know how to do. All right, so let's put some definitions to some things here. The points that are inside the ellipse there, if you didn't know that that's what that's called, it's not a, that's called an oval when you're a little kid, but as you get older and you take more advanced math classes, that's called an ellipse. Um, those are all clustered together. So we call that a cluster. And then we have these three other pairs that are way off from that cluster. We call those outliers. Let me give you an example of an outlier for you guys. Let's say that you typically get an A in math, and you typically get an A in all your quizzes and tests. But suddenly, one day, you came in, you didn't study because you weren't feeling well, and you probably should not have come to school, and you got a 52%. So you got 95, 94, 92, 89, 100, 52. 
that 52 is what we would call an outlier because it doesn't summarize your ability as a math student. These points right here could be considered to be outliers. They don't fit the data. All right, so here we have another situation where we're comparing an animal, an animal's brain weight to its maximum life. This is a positive association because the, the dots are going uphill. It's not perfect, though. And so what we want to do is we want to try and come up with a line of best fit. And we can think of these points acting like magnets attracting the line. So would that be a very good line of best fit, yes or no? No, and if you did one like that, um, you obviously wouldn't be paying attention to what we're doing. Um, how about that one? Is that a good one? No. Now, it's better than the last one, but it's not very good. Getting close, right? Getting close. Getting closer. And that actually is a pretty good line of best fit because it's about as close as you can get to all of the ordered pairs. And... What John might think is a good line of best fit, Autumn may think it's slightly different than that, and Para may think it's slightly different than that, and Danielle might think it's slightly different. So you may not have all the same line of best fit, but when we go to find something from that line of best fit, all of your answers should be very, very close to one another. And if they're not, your line of best fit is not good enough. Okay? So that's a pretty good line of best fit. So once we figure out our line of best fit, then what we do is we pick two ordered pairs, and I want to make a point right here. I happen to, in this line of best fit, use two points that were already there for us. We do not have to use two ordered pairs that are actually part of the data. We could have used one. Let me zoom in a little bit for myself. We could have used one right here. That would have been okay. We could have used one right here. So my point is we don't have to use an ordered pair that's part of our data, which has a dot there for us. We don't have to do that. Okay? So the idea is to pick two points that best represents your line of best fit, and from that, write an equation of that line, which is basically what we did yesterday. Okay? So right now, we're going to go to number one, and I know that you guys have all of the data plotted. It wasn't supposed to be that way, but it is. And uh, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm going to stop for a second and pass out rulers. Now, as you're trying to figure out your line of best fit, then from there, you're going to have to find two perfect ordered pairs that are on your line of best fit. And those will end up being the two points that you will use to find the equation of your line. Okay? So, for example, you may think that that is the line of best fit. You may think it's slightly different than that. It's okay. So, if I use that as my line of best fit, I have to find two perfect ordered pairs. Well, there's one. There's another. There are lots more on there. So, now what I do is I take those two ordered pairs on mine, negative 2 comma negative 1 and 2 comma 3 and I find the line the equation of that line exactly like we did yesterday I would like all of you to do that alright so I already stated which two ordered pairs that I used and we were asked from that point to write an equation of that line so I'm using negative 2 comma negative 1 2 comma 3 and then just doing what we did yesterday which is using the point slope formula or point slope equation and finding the equation of that line. So my slope is 1. I'm going to use 2 comma 3 for the same strategies or for the same reason that I talked about yesterday. I tend to like to stick with ordered pairs that have all positive numbers if I have that choice, and I do. And so my equation is y equals x plus 1. Now, I walked around and I saw most of your papers. Most of you have a slope that's very, very close to 1 and a y-intercept that's very, very close to 1. Four-thirds I saw on a lot of your papers. Four-thirds is 1 and one-third. That's very close to 1. Um, so whatever you choose, it will be close to that. And if it's not, you're not doing something right. Any questions about number 1? Yes. All right, so... 
Here is the graph again. And uh, so what you were saying is you were saying that you had a negative 1 for a y-intercept. So that means your graph is a little lower there, right? So that means it's going to be a little further away from these top order pairs, 0, 2 and 4, 6 than mine is. Okay. All right, so the slope represents the unit rate. Remember that from several days ago in the context of the problem. So let's pretend that this graph represents time versus distance. So in my problem, that means that there is an increase of one foot per minute. That's the unit rate for this problem. How do I know that? How do I know that? What's that? It is y equals x plus 1. Yeah, but you still haven't answered why it's 1 foot per minute. Yes? The slope is 1, right. The slope right here is 1. And the slope leads us to the unit rates. And in terms of this problem, it's distance per time. So it's 1 foot per minute. And when we do number 2, I'm going to put you in a situation like this, and this is how you're going to have to answer it, OK? All right. Y-intercept represents the initial or the starting value. We will get to that um, in our next lesson. All right, everybody, try number two. And I believe all of your order pairs are already plotted for you. Let's draw a line of best fit and come up with an equation of that line. I'm going to use uh, that point right there, 1 comma 1. And this point right here, 4 comma negative 5, there are other order pairs I could have used. I just chose to use those two. So now I'm going to put those two together and utilize the point-slope equation to come up with my equation. My slope is negative 2. And I'm going to use 1 comma 1, smaller numbers. Both are positive. That's nice and easy. So the equation that I came up with is y equals negative 2x plus 3. So let me put some context into what this problem could uh, represent. So what if I said that this is the amount of time, the x-axis represents the amount of time spent exercising in weeks, and the y-axis spends the amount of uh, weight lost in pounds. What would our unit rate be? Talk with your shoulder partner really quickly. What would the unit rate be? Janina, what would the unit rate be? Uh, losing two pounds per week. Losing two pounds per week. Uh, I don't know why it's, uh, if there is a decrease of three pounds. I don't know why. That should obviously be two. That should be two. Um, the initial value, which is something I talked about in the last problem that we will come back to in the next lesson, uh, the initial value is the starting value, and that always happens to be the y-intercept. So our initial value in this one is 3. All right, last problem for today. Dogs age differently than humans do. You may have heard someone say that a dog ages one year for every seven human years. However, that is not exactly the case. That's just usually an estimate, and it differs by dog breed. Uh, the table below shows the relationship between dog years and human years. So here is what you need to do. You need to plot the data, and you need to come up with a line of best fit, and then from there, come up with the equation of that line. So based upon the fact that we just did two problems that were actually a little tougher than this one, uh, go ahead and do that. And then, we'll, then we will answer the question, Based on your equation, what is the approximate human age when a dog is 11 years old? All right. So we were supposed to figure out, uh, we, would plot, we plotted all of our data here, come up with a line of best fit, come up with the equation of that line of best fit, and then based on your equation, what is the approximate human age when a dog is 11 years old? I, most of you got something that was relatively close to one another. Uh, in other words, what I saw was something in the 60s or low 70s. So those are all relatively close to one another. And it all just depended on your line of best fit. So I'm going to go ahead and plot my data. 
I'm comparing dog years to human years. Went by twos on the x-axis. Went by sixes, actually. Uh, actually, I went by ones on the x-axis, not twos. I skipped lines. And I went by sixes and, uh, up the y-axis uh, because I skipped lines. Every other line was worth 12. And that's where a couple of you made a mistake when you were trying to find your slope. You didn't take that into consideration. So here is the plotting of all of my data. There's the line of best fit for me. It's about as close as I can get to all the ordered pairs. I'm a little off for the very first one, but everything else is very, very close to one another. And uh, the order pairs that I'm going to use, I'm going to use that order pair. Remember, it does not have to be one of the order pairs that are plotted. It just has to be two order pairs that are actually on the line. So I'm going to use 1, 18 and way up there, 13, 78. Now I will find my equation. And I skipped all the work there. I got y equals 5x plus 13. Pretty much everybody that I saw when I walked around either got 5 for their slope or 6 for their slope, and that's good. That's good. So now, if I want to find out how old the dog is in human years when it's 11 years old, dog years represents the x values or the inputs, so I input 11, and I get 68 years old. I saw a lot of you get in the mid-60s. A couple of you had up to 72. If you weren't somewhere around 68 then something is horribly wrong, okay? Any questions with this problem? So the homework assignment for this actually has problems where you're doing something like this. All right, we are finished for today.